Bichette is in the midst of his worst 30 game, 100 game, and 162 game stretch of his entire career. A far cry from the superstar shortstop most presumed he was maturing into just a few years ago. But why? He's striking out the least of his career, he's not chasing any more than he used to, and he's still hitting as many line drives as normal. Well, come with me and let's take a deep dive into the strange struggles of Bo Bichette in 2024. To truly understand the type of hitter Bo is, we must first go back to 2019, when he made his MLB debut midway through the season against the Kansas City Royals. In his first at-bat, he wasted no time logging his first major league hit off Brad Keller on just the second pitch he saw. Then two days later, he managed three hits, including his first home run, extending the Jays' lead to 3-1. In the end, he finished his first series in the big leagues going 6 for 13, a great start, but that's nothing in comparison to what he managed by the end of his first month as a major leaguer. After recording a double on August 6th against the Tampa Bay Rays, he set an MLB record with 10 extra base hits in his first 9 games of his career. And just 3 days later, in his second game in front of Toronto fans, he doubled off Chad Green in the bottom of the 6th inning, knocking in a run. Now by itself, it's just a good piece of hitting and an RBI, but this was actually his ninth straight game recording a two-bagger. No player in MLB history had ever done that before. Mind you, this was all within his first 11 games of his big league career. And by the end of the season, he maintained his impressive play, batting 311 with a 930 OPS in 46 games, helping cement himself as a shortstop of the future for the Blue Jays. And at this time, it was hard not to root for him, because all he wanted to do was work hard and become the best player he could possibly be. He even mentioned at the end of his rookie season that he wants to be the best player in the game. He he wants to be in the Hall of Fame discussions. This drive, this motivation culminated when he was around 15 and 16 years old when his father, Dante Bichette, a former two-time All-Star himself, was the hitting coach for the Colorado Rockies, and oftentimes he would bring Bo around the clubhouse to watch them practice. This was the early 2010s, meaning guys like Carlos Gonzalez and Dexter Fowler were among the players he got to learn from, but Bo mentioned none were as important as Troy Tulowitzki, stating he learned a lot about what's important as a fielder, but most importantly, just the effort, the intensity, the focus in everything you do no matter if anybody's watching you, if it's before a game or after. Having this mindset instilled in him at such a young age allowed him to rise through the minor league ranks quickly and stand out at the majors at just 21 years old. Because of this, there was a lot of buzz surrounding his name heading into his first full MLB season in 2020. But as we all know, the season was shortened to just 60 games, and on top of this, a knee injury kept Bo out for 4 weeks, meaning he was only able to play 29 games in 2020. And while he did find similar success with an OPS plus at a more than respectable 127, the baseball world was still waiting to see what he could do over the course of 162 games. That's where 2021 comes in. Heading into the season, it was the first time Bo was entering spring training with his eyes set on the 162 game calendar, something he said would allow him to stay mentally fresh knowing the season would be played without interruption, unlike the year prior, and this helped him break out. Throughout the season, it seemed like Bo could get to absolutely every pitch, fastball up and in, slider low and away, and in the end, he was able to lead the league in hits at 191 while managing over 100 runs scored and driven in, as well as 30 doubles, 29 homers, and an OPS plus of 121. In fact, he became one of just 5 players in 2021 with at least 25 home runs, a 290 average, and 100 RBIs, which goes to show even though he poked countless numbers of bloop hits to right field, he can still do as much damage as some of the best hitters in the league, and at just 23 years old, there was great reason to believe he was only going to get better. However, he found his fair share of troubles in 2022. To start the season, Bo had by far the worst month of his career, hitting just 213 with a 535 OPS in 22 games. And these struggles continued throughout the majority of the season as he finished August with a 260 average and 720 OPS in 127 games. But once the calendar flipped to September, he finally caught fire. Against the Orioles on September 5th, he went 3 for 5 with a home run to left field off Nick Vespi in the third, another in the sixth off Bruce Zimmerman, this time to right field, and finally in the seventh, he hit his second off Zimmerman with his blast to center field for the hat trick of home runs, all of which did different parts of the ballpark. And by the end of the month, he had impressive numbers with an over 400 average and 1100 OPS, as well as 19 extra base hits in 32 games. He also put up the second most hits during any 32 game span in Blue Jays franchise history with 55, only behind franchise icon Tony Fernandez and tied with Shannon Stewart. But don't get me wrong, this wasn't the most ideal of seasons for Bo, who struggled the majority of months, only posting two above a 750 OPS. But by the end of September, he was able to bring
during his season's totals from a mere 260 average to 290, an OPS from 720 to 802, marks close to his regular production. And because of his late surge, he was able to lead the league in hits for his second straight season. And heading into 2023, it seemed as though he would be achieving his third straight season with 144 in his first 106 games, 23 more than the man in second place, Marcus Simeon. Additionally, Bo had a 321 average, the highest in the AL, and would be the highest mark of his career. But while rounding first base against the Baltimore Orioles on July 31st, his whole season took a steep turn as he sprained his right knee, the same knee he injured during the 2020 season. This unfortunate event cost him roughly three weeks of action, but when he returned, you could tell he was off just by watching him run, which makes it no shock that he struggled mightily in his return, hitting just 229 with a 629 OPS in his first eight games. So he headed back to the injured list, this time due to his right quad, costing him another two weeks. And when he made his second return, he didn't fare much better with a 264 average and 718 OPS in 21 games. But to better illustrate his struggles, here are his numbers pre and post injury. As you can see, a major dip in average by 67 points, on base percentage by 60, slugging by 92, and OPS by 152. It was clear that his injury, while not as severe as Cody Bellinger's shoulder or Ronald Acuna's knee, still was the main factor in his lackluster finish to the season, and because of this, it left a sour taste in his mouth. This was actually one of the main reasons why there was a lot of optimism for Bo heading into 2024. But so far, he's on pace for his worst season of his career by a considerable margin, on pace for less than 10 home runs, a sub 250 average, and 650 OPS. So what happened? But now a word for today's sponsor, Under 510 Clothing. Now I myself am a shorter guy and maybe you are too. That's where Under 510 comes in. By clicking the link in the description, you get a $10 coupon to their website where they have a wide selection of comfortable and affordable clothing for all us shorter guys out there. They have joggers that wick away moisture to keep you dry and cool during the summer months, athletic t-shirts that wrap around the arms but give enough room in the chest, as well as many more that I'm sure you'll love. And with summer fast approaching, as well as this great offer, there is no better time to upgrade your wardrobe with under 510. All right, thank you under 510 for sponsoring this video. Now back to the content. Well, when watching Bo, there are a few things you notice, but perhaps the biggest comes pre and post two strikes. As you can see, before two strikes, he uses a big leg kick and has a lot of moving parts in his upper body. But when he gets to two strikes, he transitions to a no stride approach. And with Baseball Savant's new bat speed tracking data, we now know he also drops his average bat speed by almost two miles per hour with two strikes. The reason? To create more contact. That's why it's no shock that Bo led the league in foul balls in 2021, in 2022, and in 2023 prior to his injury, and it's all because he was fighting off tough pitches. And by hitting so many foul balls, he's able to stay alive in at-bats long enough for a pitcher to make a mistake that he can capitalize on. And with two strikes, he's not trying to do too much, he's just trying to get a level swing on the ball and get it into the outfield, where he spreads it across all three fields. In fact, since 2021, he has led the league in opposite field hits by a considerable margin with 240, 36 more than the second most from Nathaniel Lowe. It's what he does. It's what makes Bo, Bo. That's why the first avenue I went down in trying to find reasons as to why he's not performing like his usual self were his stats with two strikes. But so far this season, he's still excelling in this category with an SOPS plus of 147, meaning his OPS of 624 with two strikes is 47% better than the average hitter in this situation, showing that his two strike approach has actually been the best it has ever been. Ben. But there's another split that I found interesting. When looking at his stats when he's ahead in the count, even or when the pitcher is ahead, we can find that he's having more success when in the hole. Let me show you. When he's ahead in the count, he's batting a mere 232 with a 654 OPS, and in terms of SOPS plus just 40, meaning he is 60% worse than the average hitter when ahead in the count. And when it's even, he's hitting just 252 with a 577 OPS, good for just a 74 SOPS plus. And finally, when the pitcher is ahead, he's hitting 232 with a 669 OPS for an SOPS plus of 158. That is wild to me because never would I have imagined looking through a player's stats to try and uncover why he is struggling and find out that he is performing well with his back against the wall, but poorly when he's in the driver's seat, which makes you wonder. If his two strike approach is working for him, his regular swing, the one with the big leg kick and many moving parts in the upper body, must be off. But so far this season, there hasn't been any glaringly obvious differences in his swing, meaning this could all just be a mental battle for him because early in the counts it seems as though he's trying to do too much, but when he gets behind and reverse to his minimalist contact-centered approach, 
he's actually performing better than he ever has. So if his struggles are early in the count, what could be the cause of this? Well, for starters, let me give a quick lesson in two stats I would like to use. The first being batting average on balls in play, or BABIP for short. This metric measures a player's batting average exclusively on balls hit into the field of play, removing outcomes not affected by the opposing defense. For example, if a player goes 2 for 5 with a home run and a strikeout, this is how you would calculate it. Because the defense is not able to make a play on home runs, that is taken away from the BABIP calculation. And the same thing applies for strikeouts. Therefore, we are left with one hit and three batted balls the defense has the opportunity to make a play on. Therefore, the BABIP would be 333. For reference, the league-wide average for this stat is roughly 300. So if a player is far below or higher than this mark, there's reason to believe just based on batted ball luck, he will either improve or regress. But with that being said, skill can also be a factor in any batted ball, because a 110 mile per hour barrel into the alley in left center is going to be a hit more often than a batted ball with a negative 64 degree launch angle. It's just not the same. That's why some players are able to sustain a higher than league average Babbitt, like Bo. From 2019 to 2023, he averaged a 349 figure, never once going lower than 339. However, in 2024, his number has taken a steep turn at 275, so one must think it will return back to the mean and everything will be okay, but it's not that easy. Because although the majority of the time when a player is experiencing an outlier-like spell in his statistic, there is another stat that can help us uncover if he is truly getting unlucky or not, and that is expected weighted on base average on contact, or ex Wobicon for short. This metric removes strikeouts, walks, and hit by pitches to measure the productiveness of a hitter when they put a ball into play by taking launch angle and exit velocity into account. For reference, the players at the top of this list this year are Aaron Judge, Brent Rooker, and Marcelo Zuna, and all these guys are above 550, with Judge on another planet at 630. Bo, on the other hand, has found himself around 400 to 450 in this stat for his career, good enough to hover around 20th best each season. However, in 2024, his figure has dropped considerably to 354, which ranks 97th in baseball. This stat gives us a better idea as to why he isn't managing as many hits on the balls he puts into play. And the most obvious reason why is because he isn't hitting the ball as hard. As you can see from 2021 to 2023, while he didn't rank among the elite in average exit velocity, he was towards the top. However, in 2024, it's considerably lower. And another stat to look at here is barrel percentage, a stat that finds how often a player is barreling the ball. And the bare minimum for a barrel is a batted ball with a 98 mile per hour exit velocity between the launch angle of 26 to 30 degrees. Basically, a ball hit with a great chance of doing damage. And as you can see, in 2024, his figure is half of what it once was, which shows that when he is making contact on the ball, his launch angle and the point at which he makes contact with the baseball needs to be improved in order to get more success on batted balls. Now, these stats I've shared with you have been the most interesting to me as to why he's having a rough start to the season, but I want to go over one last major outlier I've noticed in Bo's game, and that is his stats against fastballs. The pitch every pitcher must know how to throw, and also the one batters need to know how to hit, and when they're struggling against the fastball, it's clear they're not on their game. For Bo, this has been the case. In 2024, he has hit just 258 against this pitch, down considerably from the previous few years when he was consistently over 300, but this is actually part of the reason why I'm optimistic about the rest of his season. Remember back to when I mentioned how he struggled considerably to start 2022? Well, he was having a hard time hitting the fastball. In fact, prior to his breakout September, he ranked 228th against the heater in terms of run value. But during his breakout month, he had an average of 442 against the fastball compared to just 272 in all the months prior. And this season, Bo ranks 254th in this category. Which makes me think, if in 2022 he turned his season around by getting to the fastball, this could be the same ticket out of his underwhelming 2024 start. And along with everything else mentioned, I hope there's a little more understanding as to why one of the game's brightest young stars has found little success so far this season.